Um, Upstream Farms is putting new ideas on old dirt and connecting our customers back to the land one meal and beverage at a time. So that's the mouthful of like what Upstream is. But um, obviously our, our, our idea is to take commodities that we raise as farmers and turn them into consumables. And it's been a pretty long process to get to this point right now. Um, there's been a lot that's gone into that. But, um, you know, uh, yeah, pretty much everything we want to do is have everything that's raised on our farm uh, end up directly into a consumer's hand through, you know, an avenue that we that we create directly to them. Um, now, we don't want to have we want to take out as much of the middleman as we possibly can and, and connect directly with our consumer base instead of, um, you know, the traditional route of farming, which is taking um, the livestock that we raise or the crops that we raise and uh, selling them to. Uh, a large corporation, uh, Packers, or to an elevator, um, we want to take it and turn it into some sort of quality consumable product in a, a consumable form that we can sell directly to our consumers. But basically how we got there um, was, you know, we grew up on a family farm. It's a, s a small family farm. And, um, you know, growing up in that way, um, we learned a lot of things that we wanted, that we, you know, were proud of and we wanted to make a part of our lives. Um, we were, had creativity, music, agriculture, rural communities. Those are all things that were extremely important to us. And so um, when we got to college, we were trying to figure out, you know, I mean, personally, I think we both kind of came to this conclusion on our own and we ended up deciding that was something we wanted to do together as twin brothers. But um, through a roundabout way, um, we wanted to find an, something we could do with the rest of our lives that was the intersection of all of that. And that's when Upstream was born. When um, we decided that we wanted to, take a risk and start our own business, but we also wanted to come back to the family farm but do it in a little bit different way. And uh, so that's where the idea of taking commodities and turning them into consumables. Um, we had a product that was already, you know, had four generations of basically what you'd call product development behind it, which was good beef. It's what we were raised on. That's the first product that we ever sold directly to consumers um, was our all natural black Angus beef. Um, and, you know, we had up until we got to college, we had only consumed the beef that we had raised ourselves. Um, we had never had a steak that was from the store. And so I remember the first time we went to college and uh, you and I tried, we tried to cook a steak and we thought we, we messed it up and, or we did something wrong and we came home and we did the same way. And we realized we're like, Oh, it's the beef. It's not the way we were cooking it. And so we decided that there's gotta be a market. There's gotta be, um, you know, people out there that value high quality beef you know, raised locally, raised responsibly. Um, and so uh, that's when we decided to develop a, re uh, a retail website and try to start marketing it direct to consumer. And uh, we've been doing that for seven years now. And um, we started off, um, you know, the first year, I think we sold four head of uh, beef right through the, you know, through our, our business. And now we're 100% vertically integrated. Everything we raise is sold directly to the consumer. I've said this for a while now, um, I guess maybe since I've been old enough to care about thinking about these types of things, but I, I feel personally like um, our world and, and our age of folks, our generation is shifting, um, I, I hope this is true, but I feel like we're shifting more towards kind of that, that way, that direct consumer um, type of way. Uh, you know, I think you guys, when you guys and I grew up when we were young, it was, it was the opposite. Everything had spent the last couple of decades kind of integrating, um, into these conglomerates and these big, this big corporate America kind of channels, um, because that was more efficient. And obviously it, for those, for those companies that that's where the billions of dollars were. Um, but, but I think that our generation is kind of shifting towards kind of questioning where stuff's come stuff comes from a little bit and obviously we've had you know the mess that was 2020 and you know other events like that 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 have kind of helped to fan the flames on that um so th that's something i think about and and i hope it's true it, it might be a factor of just where we live and it's maybe a little more common around here than it would be out on the edges of the country um, or in more metro areas but, but I seem to think that. And then the other thing that goes along with that um, that I've noticed is with our generation, I feel like we're shifting back towards um, willing to pay a little bit extra for quality. You know, and, th and that's another thing that was, I think, trending the other way through our childhoods, you know, 30, 25 and 30 years ago. Um, everything was manufacturing, was getting more and more efficient. 
um, stuff was going overseas and stuff was getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and you could go buy a pocket knife at Walmart for 20 bucks. Um, I, I feel like our generation is trending more towards, you know, if they can buy a knife for $200 that, you know, they can go shake the guy's hand that built it. Um, I think people are more willing to consider those things. And, and I think your product and our product at Handlebin fit, fit into both of those um, categories. And um, I think the fact that we are growing businesses kind of lends itself to that idea that that, that is the way stuff is starting to shift. You know, we're really fortunate to have a consumer base, I feel like, and, and, and support from a local market as well. But also, I mean, I agree with you, Mike. I think that there's a lot of people that um, it used to be that you needed things, you know, consistent. It needed to be fast and it needed to be affordable. Um, and that was what they cared about. But now we're seeing that shift as well. And, and it's actually something that we're really passionate about is a community that we can um, develop, a community of people that, that we can serve and help and provide a quality product consistently and at a good rate, a good, 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 you know, a, an affordable price. But um, as you know, I mean, every time that, you know, you, you have this, you know, you take out an efficiency of something, there's going to be extra cost there, but people still, um, it blows their mind. People still value it. They still uh, come back to it and they still appreciate the product that we, that we create and that we, and that we raise and grow every, every day. And one of the, one of the things that we've always said too, is just to kind of go off of what you said, Mike, was that we've always said that the relationship we want to have, no matter how big of a business we get or how small we are, um, we've always said we want to be, uh, we want to be our customer's personal farmer. So we want to build a relationship that, that you would have with your mailman or your hairdresser. Um, you know, the, the person that you know and you consistently go to um, when you're looking for a good or service and you, they, they, you know, you know their children and you know their family and you know their dog and you know their pets and you know um, their lifestyle. Those are things that we will always hold true to us as values of our uh, with our company and with our farm is we want to build a relationship um, and we want to be people's personal farmers. The relationship is, is probably, I would say, 50% as important to us as the product that we're selling. You know, and I think um, that's that's really what you're getting to the heart at is is that, you know, a product can be as good as you want. It can be, you know, as cheap or affordable or as quick or convenient as you can as as you want it to be. But it's the relationship at the end of the day. And because of things like, you know, I think uh, us meeting the way that we're meeting right now is a testament to that is that we are able to. Um, you know, create a virtual experience where people can get to know us on a much larger scale because of technology. And so I think that's something that, you know, is very different than what it was even 20, 30 years ago. Now we can, we can have relationships with people all over the world and we can create that experience. Absolutely. I think that's something that, um, well, it, it's something we lean into very hard. It, it's, uh, the relationship is everything. And, and this, this technology, you know, this meetup here is nice because you can expand your circle and build relationships with folks you wouldn't other, otherwise be able to contact. Um, you know, but I'd much rather be able to uh, be standing in your driveway, you know, leaning on the tailgate of a pickup doing this. Um, and I think people yearn for that, that, that personal relationship building. Um, and, and I think it's largely we're in a place right now where it's missing from our world and people are so plugged in, um, to social media algorithms and, and, uh, you know, work and, and everybody's schedules are far busier or seem far busier than they were, you know, uh, 30 years ago when, when phones were hanging on the wall and attached to it by a cord. And, uh, you know, if you're out of the house, you just, you're just alone. Um, and, and so that's one of the things with our brand, too, that we realized uh, very early on, you know, we, we would sell a set of mugs and we would get feedback from those customers. Um, they were so proud of that product that they would, you know, host a party. They would go gather uh, Moscow Mule ingredients. and They would host a party, you know, ultimately around the Moscow Mule because they're proud of these hand-built copper mugs. Um, and, and that's really cool. You know, the product is great and it's great that people are proud of them. But but we realized very early that, that bigger than that, like our mugs are literally bringing people together. People are gathering around them and spending time together. Um, and it's like, well, that's that's what we need to promote. Um, you know, if, if we can if we can gain a following and and have a spread the good word uh, that that inspires people like it's not going to be to, hey, you know, buy our mugs. 
um, it's going to be that, hey, sit down and slow down with, with the folks uh, that you love and, and maybe you don't get to see very often and spend some quality time around the kitchen table and, you know, play a game of cards or something. And, and that's, um, I think that's the important thing to be promoting in our world today because it, it is, everybody's just so hyper-connected and, and you can see it with the levels of stress and anxiety and everything that people deal with um, seems to be on such a broader level than it used to be. Uh, and, and I think those are the things that are definitely worth leaning into. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and I think that's one of the things that's kind of cool about, you know, we both had each other's, um, you know, we've got your guys' meal mugs in our, in our, uh, you know, kitchen cabinets at home. And I know that you guys have, uh, had our beef before. And I, I think that that, you know, to be able to be two Nebraska businesses, uh, that are able to provide that sense of, of, you know, community and provide that you know that experience that experience is just really really cool um that that there are other people that are aligned in that vision because we're we're lockstep in that we're lockstep with you guys in that um and and i think it's just an awesome awesome opportunity to just have two nebraska businesses that are close trying to achieve that goal yeah like what you said before mike about you know um that instead of promoting your product um you know it's just really cool to be able to see the experiences that your product can be a part of. And you're just honored to have your business be a part of that. Um, you know, I think that that's something that, uh, you know, I think that we've felt and it's cool to hear you say that too, because um, I think you find something special uh, when you have a product that you're able to um, be a part of someone's experience or, or, you know, something very special to them. You're able to just be a part of that. It's, it's, it's humbling. Yeah. And we really appreciate you you know, having us be a part of that, or at least having us be able to chat about it with you, because, um, you know, that's the, the fact that you would even consider us as part of, you know, the quality and, and be able to have the same effect as what you guys provide for people. Um, it, it's, it really may, it makes us proud that yeah, we're it's able an to, honor. Yeah, to be able to put our, our product up with yours. So that's great, man. And it, it comes down to, um, number one, just like we said a minute ago, it's all about the relationship and, um, we love you guys and we've spent, a lot of time with you and and obviously you guys are i mean you, you just there's there's no try involved right like you guys are just the same kind of human beings as us and um you know i think a lot of our perspectives are because we were raised you know we were raised an hour and a half apart but you know both in the in the very same setting you know small town rural nebraska and we were raised on the same values and and you can just see that on what we value in these businesses we're growing and in these brands. Um, it's not about the business or brand per se. I mean, obviously that's what's gonna pay the bills hopefully someday, uh, but it really is about the kind of the inspiration and the feedback you get from your customers and the relationships you build with your customers. So it was a no brainer to reach out to you guys on this deal. And then, you know, second, um, I, I feel like your product is, has a lot of the same qualities, just like you said, you got, you get a lot of feedback and, and you get to see the experiences people are having around it. Um, you know, I, I recently got um, a box of steaks in the mail from you guys and they go in the freezer and they like, they just sit there and that you wait, you're like saving them, you know, you're saving them for that special occasion. You, you eat your hamburger and your, you know, whatever during the week. And then it's like Saturday night and you're gonna have some people over and you pull these like beautiful, you know, steaks out of the freezer and you're proud of them and you want to present them. And it's uh, it's all about the experience and it's kind of a, a special occasion thing. I mean, I can remember as a kid growing up, like steak night was like a big deal. A couple times a year, you'd get get a steak on a Saturday night or something when your mom and dad would make it. Otherwise, it's just like tater tot casserole or, or you know, whatever they could throw together. <laughs> Ground beef was still a staple though. <laughs> oh, 100%. We still go through a lot of it for sure. <laughs> At the end of the day, for us, it's quality is everything. You know, that starts at the standpoint of what we do, you know. And um, I think that if you don't if you don't start with that, um, that idea, like you just said, of it going away in the freezer and it just – it's something that you savor and you wait for um, for a special occasion. Um, if that's not at the, at the center of everything you do, then uh, you're not going to be able to be that for those folks, you know, for your customers. And so for us, it's just a huge thing that quality is at the, at the beginning of everything we do, which sometimes means that we have to focus on being farmers and being good farmers and taking care of our animals properly, um, sometimes more so than being, you know, 
uh, business owners. And so it's interesting because, you know, you go to college, you take all these business classes or whatever, and they're like, you know, the customer is always first, the customer is always first. And for us, the customer and our customers are near and dear to us. They're the most, they're, you know, they're the second most important thing to us, but the first most important thing is our animals, you know, and our, and, and, and taking care of our land and our animals. And um, that's our responsibility as farmers, first and foremost. And so, um, you know, and we have customers and, and relationships with people that they understand that. But it's still something that um, is extremely important to us. So it's at the center of everything we do. Taking care of our land, taking care of our animals, being good farmers first. Um, I think, you know, that... that and that translates, sense. I think, yeah. over to the experience that people get. Because, um, you know, our goal is to share our story with people and be able to see what, you know, our vision and our goals. And because of that, um, not only is it a quality, it's a tasty product, but you know, you know the, the care and the passion that was put behind it. Um, and that's something that you could, that's, you know, you can find a good steak. Um, you know, th there's a grading system for that, right? You can find a good steak, but very rarely can you find a good steak and understand the entire process and know that, that, that animal was cared for and that, that there was, that there was somebody that, that had an end goal in mind and that angle was, was, was them. Um, you know, and I think that that's like kind of how we started this conversation. That's missed out a lot when we make things so efficient that, um, you know, they, they just don't get that understanding or, or, you know, you can only cook a steak um, and get a prime grade steak so many different ways, uh, knowing the, the process behind how it was raised and, and knowing the level of detail and care that goes into raising these animals um, and caring for them. That That is where uh, I think our process and our story sets ourselves apart. Um, and I think that, you know, there's a lot of great producers doing a lot of very similar things in the state of Nebraska. And we want to be supportive of that. We want Nebraskans eating Nebraska beef too many times. You see that there's not that happening, that there's that there are people that are buying meat from the grocery store that didn't even come from the beef state. Um, and we want to be able to connect with our consumers in that way and start right here in our home state and then be able to allow other people um, outside of our state to have that same experience. Yeah. And then on top of that too, Mike, is I think it's important to remember that like, you know, what Joe's talking about with the quality and that, that, you know, that start, that's the, the beginning of that experience. But the end of that experience is taking advantage of opportunities like this to tell our story that you're giving us this platform to be able to talk about what we do. Because at the end of the day, if someone purchases from us, you know, and I, you guys know this with your mugs too. I mean, I, I feel like when I, when I watch what you guys are doing, it's like, you know, rarely are you talking about your mugs you know you're talking about what happens with your mugs and we get to know you guys and that's something that we we have really identified with and why we feel I feel like we we enjoy each other so much is because we um, that's that's a huge thing is when somebody's enjoying our beef we want them to be able to say not only is this an incredible meal not only is this you know a nutrient dense delicious meal but we also get to tell you about where we got it about the people we bought it from and we can start start from finish that these these are the people that um, are raising our food and i think you know i don't want to get sentimental about anything but i do think that when we lose that connection between our food and the land and the customer um you start to see more of a division in a lot of other things as well and i think being connected to our food and connected to our producers and our consumers um it might be a, a good start to solving a lot of issues that I think we see in the world today, which is just lack of communication. I mean, a lot of it's lack of communication, lack of understanding one another and connecting consumers and producers is a good way to start dialogues. So um, that's one thing we're really excited about to be able to do with our customers. Yeah, that, that connection, um, I think with your food, I, I think you guys are right on there because it is everything, uh, you know, and, and it has been widely lost in the last, I, I guess I, you guys probably know the history of the industry better than me, but um, I would say in the last 30 years or, or 40 years, it's just been on that trend. And I mean, people, you have people literally thinking meat comes from the store, like to, to that extent. And it's like, you know, we, we got to start somewhere on uh, kind of understanding that process. And then once you, like you said, it's just, a, it's a lack of knowledge. And, and once you can kind of build the foundation of you know, what a, what a cow is and, and cow equals red meat, um, then you can start getting into the finer details of, of production and, and uh, you know, the difference in quality of meat and the makeup of that meat. Um, so I, I think that's a very important thing for you guys to lean on um, as kind of an information pillar in your brand, for sure. 
our goal is to be able to take all the cattle that we raise and uh, market them directly to consumer. And our first year, we started off with about four head of cattle beef through our beef business, our retail business, and now we're 100% vertically integrated, selling all the beef that we raise um, direct to consumer, which is something we're really excited about. Um, and we, we raise those cattle from start to finish, from conception through processing, and everything that we feed our cattle, we raise ourselves as well. So um, all of the, the forages and feeds, um, the grains that they consume, uh, we raise ourselves. We have one of the main grains that we raise is corn. Uh, everybody's pretty familiar with that one. Uh, but not a lot of people realize that, um, you know, corn is not just fed to cattle here in Nebraska. Um, a lot of it goes to the ethanol industry or goes to an elevator and then it gets transported somewhere else. Um, but for us, we want to try to keep all those, just as we were talking about, keep all of those commodities on our farm and turn it into some sort of consumable farm for our customers. And, uh, so we actually have a surplus of grain every year that we don't feed our cattle. And uh, so one of the ways that when we were thinking about what we wanted to do with that um, is we can turn that into high quality spirits. And so that was one of our goals uh, moving forward and something that we've been working on for a very, very long time. We don't have a product that's ready for consumption at this point, um, but we are creating bourbon uh, through a distillery that we launched two years ago. Um, and it's sitting there quietly aging in a barrel uh, waiting to be put in a bottle. Um, but we, we create uh, bourbon and vodka on our farm as well um, for, or, and hopefully vodka down the road um, for, for producers to enjoy right alongside the beef that, that we raise as well. Um, and we use that using excess corn that we don't feed our cattle. We like to say instead of taking a, you know, a corn and putting it in a grain bin and it can eventually go bad over time, um, we like to distill it, put it in a 53 gallon barrel and it gets better with time. And so um, we built an entire brand, you know, around our beef company, like we talked about earlier, based around quality. And so um, that's something that we've been going back and forth on is, you know, we try these different uh, every every you know month we're breaking into a barrel and seeing how far along it is because you know um, good bourbon takes four to five years to, to really make a really good bourbon you know decent bourbon can be aged for two years and we just hit that two-year mark and so it's this constant battle battle of is it ready is it good enough we don't want to sacrifice quality um, you know for for time and so um, that's something that we're still trying to figure out is when's the right time to uh, to start putting the stuff in a bottle and taking it out of the barrel but what we do know is um, when it is, uh, when it is ready, it will be good because that's, that's our values. That's, um, what we value as producers, not only as, uh, distillers and, and sellers of meat, but also as farmers. Well, I can personally testify, um, on your guys' behalf, on your attention to detail, because I've had the good fortune of being able to taste, uh, your bourbon at some point along the way. I think it was maybe at the year mark or something. And I mean, I thought it was fantastic. I'm like, you guys are ready to rock. And you're like, no, nope, it's not it yet. We're gonna, we're gonna sit on this a while longer. And so I know that uh, the day that the day that that hits the world, it's gonna be fantastic stuff. Yeah, it's it's a long process, and we've had a lot of folks um, that are very uh, eagerly waiting for us to put it into a bottle. And uh, there can be some pressure once in a while for us to do that. Some people are, are you guys actually doing anything uh, in that distillery of yours? Are you actually, you know, you, you said you were going to do this and you did it and, and that there's no product coming out. And that's the unfortunate part about bourbon is it takes a long time to actually get a quality product established, but um, we're willing to wait that out. We have a lot of patience um, as farmers. You know, that's something that comes natural to us as patients. And so we're not going to sacrifice quality and taking it out of the barrel too soon and have just a mediocre product. We really want to be quality, um, really have an emphasis on quality. Um, and, and that way that experience is not just through our beef that we raise, but also through the, the spirits that we are, are consuming uh, or that we're creating as well, so. Yeah, and, and from the production side, you guys are you're still going and producing bourbon so that once you hit your launch date, like it'll just be seamless from then on. You'll always have product that's hitting its its uh, age and everything. Is that right? Yeah, that's that's the another challenging part about about bourbon. So uh, two years ago, we started what you consider a research and development facility, a little R and D facility with a small eighty gallon still, um, and you know it was just Matt and I in there all the time, putting a lot of sweat equity. 
into those uh, and into that you know just just figuring out what we were doing and making sure that we could do it and and really mastering the craft of distillation. Um, but now that we have been able to taste the barrels and similar to what you're talking about, Mike, we, we, you know, we know we've got a quality product started, um, and it's only going to go up from there. So we're ready to start mass producing that. So we just made a large investment into larger distillation equipment, about uh, five times as large um, uh, di distillation equipment that we can start going from, you know, one barrel a month, one fifty-three gallon barrel a month, uh, to being able to crank out eight gallon eight. Uh, 53 gallon barrels a month and then we've additionally to that we uh, realize that to be good farmers we can't do it all by ourselves so we had the fortunate um, opportunity to have um, to bring um, what I would call a partner on he's an employee we're paying him but he's more like a partner because he's taking a, a good risk on us um, at just as much as we are with him uh, you know and we're figuring that out as we go as well but a, a really good relationship formed there with somebody who's going to be in that distillery all the time and being able to focus on the quality of that product as well so um, again being able to just expand what we're trying to do and be able to have you know quality product around all the time uh, that way there's not really a lag in production um, you know we, we've only got about seven barrels right now and hopefully we'll have 80 barrels aging by the end of the year is, is our goal so, um, so yeah, we're, we're, it'll start slow and then take off is the goal. So, <laughs> but honestly, to that point though, too, I remember Mike, you talking, you've, you've expressed this with us at, at one point through one of our many conversations, um, is that it's funny because, uh, you know, I don't know, everybody has a different motivation, like I, motivation to start a business. I know a lot of folks who are either small business owners, entrepreneurs, big company owners or anything like that. They all have different motivations, but one thing that I've always has motivated me was to hire folks like, you know, to me, to be able to bring on our first employee and be able to build a relationship and be able to do that. That was, you know, a huge, huge, you know, uh, goal of mine. And uh, just because I don't want to be that farmer that just isolates him or herself on their farm and, and never, never lets anybody else be a part of it because um, creating the opportunity to, uh, you know, have more people be involved with what you're doing can only gr help grow your community. Um, it helps obviously grow your business, but it also helps you grow uh, personally. I mean, we've even noticed just having, um, you know, Thomas is his name, uh, having Thomas hang out with us, you know, for the last couple months has been really awesome for us because it's had a new set of eyes look at everything we're doing and say, hey, why don't you try it that way? Why don't you try it that way? And it also gives us the opportunity to teach what we're doing, um, which makes you look at things a little bit different. Um, you know, but it's cool to be able to not just be us two in the room now, just talking about these things, having somebody else who's just as excited about what you're doing is extremely, um, extremely important to us. And it's been a lot of fun. And I know that's something you've talked about is, is, you know, you and Matt, that was a big deal for you guys, uh, was to, to be able to bring people and make them a part of, of your business and not just be a, a two man wrecking crew. Yeah, it's a huge deal to us, and we um, we kind of cherish it, and we really appreciate having the opportunity to do that and have people that are interested in, in working with us. Um, and and the thing that 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 kind of prides me um, the most out of that is you know we're building this brand uh, that that people are interested in outside of our you know outside of our local neighborhood here. Um, and, and it's kind of proving that we can do this in small town Nebraska, and you guys are doing the exact same thing. Um, and, and you know, technology is a part of that—the like the high-speed internet and the connect the connectivity to the world. Um, but to be able to have these these uh, trendies a trendies a bad word, but these uh, these interesting brands um, producing great quality uh, and do it with good human beings. Um, and, and create these kind of cool jobs that you wouldn't necessarily think are available in small town Nebraska. Uh, to be able to do that is, is kind of what I like to hang my hat on a little bit. Um, and I want to keep going forward with it. And I want to help um, anybody that has an idea um, or, or maybe has been waiting on, on trying to launch something. Um, I, I, I would do anything I can to encourage them to go for it because um, there's, there's talent there's a lot of talent in small town Nebraska, and I think it's because of the generations that have been raised on um, hard work and, and ingenuity. I mean, we're out here a long ways from a parts store in a lot of cases, and so you have to be kind of ingenious and inventive 
And I think that, that in generations that has bred a, a certain grit into the kind of people that live here. And to be able to showcase some of those talents with our brands um, is, is a pretty special thing. Um, as we've gotten older, we've learned Kim. Um, some of the best dialogue, some of the best conversations um, happen around a glass of whiskey or bourbon. And so um, we want to be a part of that experience too. And um, we're really excited as farmers to be able to provide that as well. And so, you know, it's, it's crazy because, uh, you know, you guys build hand built these amazing mugs that are like, you know, just hand built, um, attention to detail quality. Um, it's a, it's a craft product for sure. And that's something that like, you know, uh, for us to be able to, to make that. And then, you know, someday hopefully have a, a glass of, uh, a glass of bourbon or, or a good mule made with uh, vodka from our farm is something we're excited to be able to, to do with you guys and, and create that experience. And that's something we're think will be super fun, uh, to be able to, uh, you know, do alongside of you guys. And we, we will definitely get there and do it as soon as you guys are ready to roll. Um, but that's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool sentiment. The idea, uh, that, you know, you guys could, uh, potentially wake up in the morning and I know the process is longer than this with planting and harvest and raising grain and raising cattle. But, uh, you know, you can, you can not even leave getting your pickup. Uh, you can go pick some corn and turn it into whiskey and, uh, feed a cow and end up, you know, with a glass of whiskey and a steak at the end of the day. And you haven't even left home for the grocery store, you know. And you know every step of the process that went into it. I mean, that's our goal, and and that's our goal for our our the, our customers as well. Um, and just providing that experience, and uh, and then being able to enjoy watching them have that experience too, in the same way that we get to. Um, that's our goal as as producers. And if we could do that every day for the rest of our lives, and and allow the people to be a part of it, that's 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 what we want. So.